The warp tool. That's kind of a, a, an important one, if you will. What I'm going to do just to make this a little bit easier, I'm going to just detach this real quick. And I'm going to reattach it because I want to talk just starting off with a regular image and then talking about the different warp tools that are here and just sort of how they how they function. So I'm going to attach this one more time. And it's just nothing more than that PDF that we had earlier. And I'm going to place it interactively just to keep it a little bit smaller. I'll just uh, put it right about here. So we'll start with that. We'll attach that image. There it is. And we're going to get it to fit here using one of these different warps that you see. So there's some warping tools. The warping tools allow you to set a different method. And you'll see some of them have, well, all of them do, really. They have a number of points that are available. Um, you know, that actually means something. In other words, the math that's being used to uh, do these, to do the warp, is looking for two sets of control points. When you see some that are three sets of control points, that's what it's really looking for, that number of variables. If we start adding more points to this, one of the things that you'll notice is that the warp that you end up with, um, one, it may not work in some cases, but the ones with the plus, like similitude and the fee, what will happen with those is you may end up with a warp that's actually worse than it started out as. Because what ends up happening is the more points that you add to it, the more error that you introduce to it. So yeah, while it does say two points or plus, you wanna to try to stick to two or as close to two as possible. Sure, can you add a third point in there for a fiend or uh, similitude? Yeah, you most definitely can uh, for a fiend because it requires three pairs of control points. But similitude, you might be pushing it a little bit and you might end up making the uh, warp actually worse. So that all said, let's just start off with the align. The align is looking for two points, right? Two pairs of control points. So the first thing that we're going to do is give an image point. And I'm just going to pick the border and I'm going to make it fit this area here. Not a hard task, right? We probably could do that with move and scale, but let's give a data point on the uh, image first. So I'm going to pick that, that corner of that raster attachment that's there. You'll notice I get a little bit of an arrow that, that appears. So it's, at, you know, real quickly, I can visually see where that's going to go. We want to put it down to here. But you'll notice that when I give it that, that second point, now it, it, it goes away and it's asking me for another image point. So we'll say, all right, that point there. And now you start to see the image rubber band sort of on your, your screen, right? As you move your cursor around, it's showing you that, that point that you're providing. Well, what's this controlled by? Well, they're in the preference. Uh, in the last session, we, talk, we talked about a preference that controls this. On small images, this is not a problem. You can see how quick it does it. But if this was a really large image, it might struggle a little bit while trying to do uh, even something simple like an affine warp or, or, excuse me, like an align warp, if it does. And the, and the, the uh, uh, graphics aren't displaying or updating the way that you, you expect it to. Remember, there's a preference. If we go to the raster preferences, we can turn this on or off. Here, I'm just going to come down and pick that corner as well because that worked just fine. It previews it. It's still in preview mode, so we'll hit a reset to accept it, and it goes ahead and warps it. So there's other types of warps that warping that is out there. A helmet warp, again, and you'll notice it gives you some hints, right? The align warp did exactly what we asked to do. It moved it, and it scaled it. And you might wonder, well, why did, why did I... Uh, detach the image and then reattach it. Take a look at the text that's right next to a line. It will move the image and it will scale it. But what did I have on my screen? I had rotated it. Uh, well, the clips were gone, but I had clipped it and so on. It was rotated, it was scaled. It would fix the scaling and it certainly would fix the moving. But what it won't fix is that fact that I had it rotated. The next warping that you see here for Helmer will do exactly that. It will move it and it will rotate it. So I want to take this and make it match over here. Maybe this is a sheet that it need, that image needs to, to fit. I'll pick something like Helmert. And same thing, I'm going to pick that lower left-hand corner. That's going to be my lower left-hand corner. I'll pick the upper right-hand corner. And as I move that over there, again, it's rubber banding that into to place. Kind of cool. Uh, again, on a really large image, if that doesn't display... You know exactly why it seems clunky and so on. Don't worry about it. Just go into your preferences and shut it off. 
MicroStation will do a great job of warping it either way, whether you can see it and it previews it or you can't. It only shows it until you hit a reset. Either way, uh, it's going to do a great job of it. So there's the, the, the Helmer warp that we had there. I'm going to do next the next one in the list, which does a little bit different. It's going to move the image. It's going to scale it and it's going to rotate it. Okay, so all three of those, you know, at the same time. Again, it's requiring, in this case, two points or more. That's what the plus stands for. This is just two. This is two points or more. So I can and, and, and add more points to this. But keep that in mind that when you do that, you could be entering more error into this. And actually, you could make it worse, which is not really what I want to do. So I'm going to give that as my first monument point, right? And then I'm going to say, well, all right, let's use this corner here. Well, for this one, it's going to work out just fine. Okay? It's going to put that right in there. It's going to move it. It's going to scale it and rotate it directly into place. Could I add a third point? Yeah, I most definitely could. Now, I'll do it here just to show you. But you can see it moving around a little bit more as I go to warp that into place. In this case, I didn't make it any worse. I really didn't make it any better. But when we hit a reset, it goes ahead and completes that. So that's what the plus means that you see here, the two points, two points plus. The last one is an affine warp, which does everything that the similitude did. But if we take a look, move, scale, and rotate, but it also can skew it. You'll notice the shape that's there is skewed that it needs to fit. So again, how does this one work? Same thing is that we'll come in, say that point is that point, and we'll give it a second point. It asks for a third. And you can see it uh, kind of cool again, as you can see that kind of warp right into place. Could I provide a fourth point if I needed it? Yeah, most definitely you can do that. I'll hit a reset and it goes ahead and, and you know, does the warping for me. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.